Greetings YouTube land. Uh, currently I'm working on the Valkyria Revolution review, but for now, let's look at the swindle. So what's the swindle all about? Well, Scotland Yard has developed a brand new security system known as the Devil's Basilisk. And it is the ultimate security measure, monitors absolutely everything, and it will make your life as a master thief totally impossible. You have 100 days in which to steal the thing. Now, the basilisk is heavily protected uh, inside Scotland Yard, and the only way to steal it is to massively upgrade your character, purchase every upgrade you possibly can. And the only way to afford all those upgrades is to steal cash. Right, so this noise box that you're in is actually an airship, and it's about to take off and fly over London. Oh, there we go. So, on the left, you have a counter at the top left-hand corner telling you how many days you have remaining. Every single heist you attempt to pull off uh, consumes one day, whether you're successful or not. The big computer screen there is for your upgrades. They're divided into five main categories. You need to steal cash to purchase those, and you will need almost every single one of them to actually pull off the heist, the final heist at the, me at the end of the game. On the left-hand side, there's a drop pod. Literally, it just drops out of... Well, it drops out of the airship like a stone, I should imagine, and just slams into the ground and deposits you in the level. Now, there are six areas within the game. Each of them has their own distinct flavour and style, and there they are on screen right now. So, six districts, and the levels are randomly generated. Now, you need to purchase enhanced security clearance to get into anywhere except the slums. So, the slums is the only area we can get into right now. No cash. Here comes the drop pod. We're entering the level. So, let's see what it's like. Well, actually, I already know what it's like because I've played this game to death, but, you know. So, here we go. Bit of a hint at the beginning of a level. You quite often get those. After a while, you don't need to read them. Here comes the first security bot. So, that yellow area in front of him is his visual radius. So, you just open the door, come up behind him, whack. Job done. Uh, those are computers. You can't hack those right now. There's some cash. And the cash gets counted onto the top left hand corner. That's your haul. 44 quid at the moment. Yep, still can't get onto that computer. You can climb up walls, in case you haven't noticed. You just go through the place and clear it out of any cash that's sat around. So areas can sometimes be divided up into more than one section. Uh, as you saw there, there's no way to reach this bit from the lower area. So that's a window, we can break through those, but the enemy can also see through them, so you need to be a bit careful. And you just come up behind him, whack him, grab the cash. So, it's a 2D platformer, so the only way to get into the building from the other side is to go over the roof. Which is what I'm doing here. So these initial levels, you can see that they are very basic security measures. There's very slow robots, they can only whack you in close, and they've got a very short visual range. They only take one hit to defeat. There isn't much cash scattered around the level either, though, so... You've just got to try. So anyway, that's the entire haul for this level, or at least it looks like it. So that's 220 quid. And it doesn't get counted on the to, your, to your bank balance until you get back to your airship. And that's most important, because you have to get out of the level the same way you came in, by the drop pod. Otherwise, you don't get the money. And that's level complete. So we got 100% of the cash. So the haul was £220. The ghost bonus you get if you get 100% of the cash and you don't get spotted. So that's an extra 750 So we got almost a thousand quid out of that level. So now we can go on over to the upgrade terminal, the workbench, and see what upgrades are available. And the ones with stars are the ones you can buy. So there's five different categories. Agility is concerned with you jumping all over the place and moving around the level. Abilities is kind of like, it's your personal skills, anything that isn't agility based. Tools, uh, tools are basically gadgets like bombs or uh, bugs 
smoke screens, anything that might help you in the game. Uh, goggles give you extra information on screen, helps you perform the heist better, points you to computers or security terminals. And the final one, miscellaneous, is about police response or your security access to higher level areas. So here we go into level 2. So we've now got 99 days remaining because we've already pulled off a heist. Same thing as before, can get that guy before he turns around. Dropping down. Ah, now I'm, I can slide down the wall but I can't stop myself from sliding down it. So I have to constantly keep on jumping up the wall uh, to stop myself from dropping down where the enemy can see me. You can get an upgrade which lets you stop sliding down the wall though. You can hold on to the wall, kind of like Spider-Man. Yep, can't hold on to the wall there either. Quite a lot of it is down to timing. So the enemies can't open doors, or at least most of them can. Uh, one or two of them can, but you find that out later. So that appears to be all the cash from this level. So just head on out to the exit again. And there we go, 100% of the cash we could have collected. So again, we get the ghost bonus. You also get an XP bonus every successful heist, and that increases the amount of cash you get out at the other end. So the more successful heists you do in a row, the greater that XP bonus goes. So at this point, I think I'm trying to find the hacking skill. I, I temporarily forgot where it was. So there it is, 100 quid. It's the cheapest ability you can have, and it allows you to grab masses of cash out of a computer. The cash you can find on the ground is just small change. The stuff in the computer, you get like double or single digit cash off of the ground. The computers give you three digit numbers. several hundred pounds. So into level 3. 98 days remaining because we've done two heists already. So yeah, you can move slowly but that's only a problem if you don't want the enemies to hear you. These enemies don't have microphones so they can't hear you. There's a lot more enemies in this level now that we're starting to advance. I mean, there's five enemies below, two, no, three above, and one on the same level, and we just knocked out one as well, so... Enemies are starting to... Enemy density is starting to increase. Security measures are starting to step up. Not that they're any harder to deal with, it just means there's more of them. And you can knock down more than one enemy in a row if they happen to be right next to each other. So now I can hold on to walls. I can just hold on to the bit of wall directly above the enemy and whack them as they pass. That move is particularly useful. Jump across, whack him when he's moving away. So this is a computer and you can use your level 1 hacking skill. And you just basically match the button prompts. So cash on the ground has currently been giving me about 8 quid each. That gave me about several hundred quid. It's worth it going for the hacking. Trying to hack the computers is well worth it. A, that was a quick double jump as well over that gap. Yep, lots more money. Ah, so we've got a new robot type now. We've got a very slow one-wheeled robot, but he's got a much greater visual range. And that camera is making life a bit awkward. Nope. Oh. Says me, I just took it out. Okay, so going up to compete with this robot. So these robots are slower, but they have a much greater visual range. Now that guy, that robot is stuck on the ledge. So I'd be an idiot to go anywhere near him. 
spike pit. Have I mentioned that this game has one hit deaths yet? Because it does. Get zapped by an enemy, fall into a spike pit, anything like that, single hit deaths. I can't get to that bundle of money over the other side. However, I've just realised that I had the bombs and I'm about to do something a bit clever. I can use the bombs to partially destroy the spikes. And as long as I don't stand right on top of the bomb... See, spikes only kill you if you land on them, but you can walk through the spikes and they don't hurt you. <laughs> you see? That's why you, that's why you buy the tools and upgrade your abilities because it lets you do nifty things like that. Things that normally you wouldn't be able to do. So enemies can see through the glass windows. So you need to be aware of that. They stop enemy movement but not not their detection uh, beam. And these enemies can't hear me either. Later on there are enemies that can hear me but not right now. Enemies that can hear you have a microphone icon above them. So you can open as well as close doors, which is very helpful because most enemies can't open doors. And then you just do that. Doddle. Ah, now there's an area down, down there and I can't get to it. Uh, I would need about three, maybe, probably four bombs to blast my way down to that area. Sometimes, because the levels are randomly generated, sometimes that happens. XP bonus still going up. I got 97% of the cash. You don't need all of the cash from a level. If you die, you lose all of the money. It's better to escape with, say, 30% of the cash rather than to drop dead and lose all of it. 95 days remaining. Bearing in mind that you fail the game when it reaches zero. Again, cameras take more than one hit. But you can hit more than one enemy at a time. If you can catch them all in one blow. Ah, and that screwed up. <laughs> Yeah, what I did there was I swung the bat on in mid-air and I mistimed it. So I've lost the XP bonus. I haven't got any cash from the level. I, I've basically got nothing. But it's still taken a day off of the off of the 100 day time limit. Right, so into the next level. And I just died, so I've got a different character. And now it says zero successful heist because... It only counts the uh, it only counts the heists for the current character. Despite what the game's sound effects lead you to believe, that ticking noise of the clock, all that clockwork ticking you can hear in the background, there is no time limit on this game. Take as long as you need to complete a level. The clockwork at first did fool me into thinking there was a time on it. There isn't. Okay, so having purchased some more upgrades, we are now heading to the warehouse district. So this is the next area that we've got security clearance for. And immediately, it's got a blue palette. So it immediately looks different. Ah, now this door can only be opened with the level 2 hacking ability. So you do need, in my opinion, in my humble opinion, you do need the hacking skill to be at level two before you can proceed. Now there's a gun camera there which recovers quicker when you hit it, but that little robot there, it's basically like a walking, running, jumping mine. You land on it, it explodes. At that point I discovered that all that effort was wasted because there's no cash there. Sometimes you will proceed through... Uh, you'll proceed through an area and you'll suddenly realise, Oh wait, I didn't need to do that. Hacking mines is the same as hacking anything. But with a mine you've got to be careful. Because if you screw up the hacking of a mine, unlike a normal computer, if you press the wrong button, the computer just ignores it. 
you press the wrong button on a mine and it detonates. Right, so there's a camera mounted in the roof there. So I can't get in through there really either. I probably could if I tried, but... So at this point I'm a little bit stuffed. I, I kind of realise that there's no way in this place. And sometimes you'll find this. You'll figure that... Actually, I can't get into this place very easily. I haven't got the required gizmo. So you know what? I'm just going to do something stupid. Grab as much money as I can and just bail. So this is what I'm doing here. I'm using the bombs to blow my way through to this red computer terminal. So when this computer terminal gets hacked, the, because it's red, uh, it will set off the alarm. So I was trying to defuse the mine, but it won't let me because the computer is right there. So I'm hacking this computer with, in the knowledge that it will set the alarm off. Now the alarm's gone off and now the police are going to have been caught, but it takes them time to reach the location. The higher the security level of the area, the quicker it is they arrive. So just grab the cash and bail. Just bail. 39%, didn't need it all, couldn't get much more. Just grab what you can and run sometimes. You don't have to get, you don't have to get 100% every single time. Know when to walk away. 80 days remaining now on the clock about 30,000 quid and one security station so decided I didn't want to go for the front door because it was a bit well well it wasn't particularly difficult to get through but then there's a window right there it's just much easier to get in that way now those robots are nasty. You see that uh, green gas cloud? That will kill you if you step into it. If you step into that gas cloud, it will kill you. Not now, but in about 10-15 seconds time. And you, you've got no option but to get that back to the drop pod. Otherwise you will die eventually. So our security's been deactivated, so now all the drones and cameras are offline, all the locked doors, or at least the doors that used to be locked are now open. Here comes another one of these poison gas gits. See, they're slow and they've got a short visual range, but that gas... The first time you walk into it, you think, what the hell just happened? Because the whole screen goes, like, green and... And you don't know what's happening, and suddenly your character just drops dead for no reason. So the crow is covering the air and the robot's covering the ground. That's making that bit a bit tricky. But that robot just blundered into the mine, so who cares? This is another important reason why we hack mines. It's because robots are stupid. Remember to grab the cash from the computer, of course. 6,000 odd. You always got to be careful because in case there's a very fast one of those, I don't know what they are, but wolf robots, they, they move incredibly quickly and they can always be waiting at the end of a long corridor. So again, you putting the mine to good use, that will add to my aptitude bonus when the level is complete. The aptitude bonus goes up every time you do some, use the environment to destroy it. So it's almost like bonus money. I'm just waiting for the poison gas to disappear. Another mine. You should always hack as many mines as possible. Just to, It just keeps you practicing. Now that's an electrical point. When the alarm sounds, it blasts a bolt of lightning up to the roof. And effectively... It effectively creates a wall of lightning that you can't get... That you can't get past without dying. So this section of floor is a bit thinner than the other one. So I've decided to... I, I can't get through there any other way. But I'm looking at the two floors to decide which one it's worth to blow through. Is it... Should I use three bombs here or two bombs in the other place? But I've decided that it's easier to blow through the floor on the left. Probably for the sake of getting back up because if you blow through the middle of a roof it makes it very difficult, if not nigh on impossible, to get back up through the hole. Whereas if I blow back through here, if you look there, there's a piece of wall that goes all the way down. So 
there's a mine there with a robot. Just blow it. See, again, the remote detonator really does earn its keep. So here, there's a lot of robots, but no problem. Just have to wait. Have to be patient. I know some people are not patient. Uh, you guys probably shouldn't play this game. Yeah, watch out for the crew. There we go. Another poison gas thing, so... It, when a poison gas robot like that is on a narrow ledge, you've got to be extremely careful because you can't just land on the ledge after you've killed them. There's a safe over there as well, so... Yeah, hack the computer while the poison gas disappears. I can probably get on over there without uh, getting gassed, yeah. So there's one more computer uh, we can see on the uh, on-screen readout. It's very close by, there it is. Another poison gas guy over there, but he's not guarding any money, so who cares? £364 in cash left, so that's probably, in this level, that's probably like a single safe. And I think I just saw the safe on the left. use the mine. Yep, there we go. So it's worth bearing in mind that explosions cannot destroy money. They can't blow up safes, they can't even blow up bags or bundles of money and they're just paper. Bombs can't destroy paper in this game. They can blow up walls, but there we go. So that's all the money. We know we've got all the money because property cash is at zero. And it's just head on back to the exit. I think I was temporarily... Oop, another poison gas enemy. I hate these things. So... Yeah, you always have to get back to the exit. You always have to remember you have to get out of the level successfully. Not only do you have to raid the place for cash, but you have to get out of the level. £58,000. Job done. So, that's the swindle. Good game. Uh, if you like platformers, if you like stealing stuff, um, it's got a good upgrade system, got an excellent range of enemies, even though you have to adapt to them every time a new one appears, because they've all got their own little tricks. And the platforming system has a few quirks, I must admit, and uh, they sometimes uh, jump in the wrong direction off of a wall, or they can slip off of a ledge. And those little things are annoying, sometimes it feels like your own character is trying to get you killed. But if you can adapt to those quirks and you can learn the enemies, I'm probably making this look easy. But that's because I've got a lot of experience. But yeah, the swindle. Platforming, thieving game. Definitely worth a look.